What's going on guys? Magdalen here. It's been a while since my last video, longer than I intended, but I am here to tell you about what I've been doing in this last week or so. I have two main things I want to go over. One is a change that I've made to the RF build, as well as some additional things that I have figured out that you could choose to implement in your own version if you wanted to. And the other main thing I want to talk about is what I've been doing in my quest to acquire a mage blood, how I've approached that, some big changes in my strategy as far as that goes. So if that interests you, stick around. All right, here we are in the hideout. So I want to go over just one change that I made to this build. And there's a little bit of a story, I guess, that goes along with why I ended up making this change. A uh, fellow streamer, Jasper, actually had his mage blood stolen. And so another streamer, Dezel, uh, made it his quest to replace it. And so we threw in on that because it was the right thing to do. And uh, it, Jasper's a really nice guy and it sucked a whole lot that that he lost that item. But anyway, uh, our altruism was uh, ultimately not necessary because Dezel dropped a mage blood and handed it to Jasper. And so everything was uh, set right. Plus, now he gets to have the mage blood in league. And so he gets to mess around with that uh, in a league where he was not specifically grinding for that because the, the one that was stolen was in standard. And so that, that was really cool. The result of that was that I suddenly got handed back a chunk of change that I didn't have allocated any longer for anything. And so I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and throw that towards the RF build. And so I went ahead and picked up what I would consider to be, at least for my version of the build, if you're still following the, the version that I laid out in the build guide itself. This would be the final upgrade, I think, and it's a Watcher's Eye that has Chaos Resistance when affected by Purity of Elements and Damage Over Time Multi while affected by Malevolence. The Phasing while affected by Haste, I suspicion if you wanted to, if you were doing only mapping, there might be a way that you could work in Haste and then drop the Phasing Flask for something better. I, it wouldn't be necessary, and I don't even know if it would be better, but you you could maybe set it up so that you were a little bit zoomy. That could be cool, but anyway, that's not why I bought it. I bought it for the, for the first two lines. And the result of that is that we now have positive chaos res with no flask and no chaos res on our gloves. So I have another pair of gloves that has, I think, 34. And they're not that difficult to get if you're willing to compromise on some of the other stats. But anyway, if I put those gloves on and the flask, we're capped on Chaos Res, Chaos Res with the setup that we have now, which is not something I've been able to do previously. And so that means that if you want to be farming simulacrums, this is probably what you need to do because they're I had been saying that I was able to clear wave 30 I think I need to amend that statement because there's I'm not sure what the mod is but about one out of three I about wave 28 or so an omniphobia will spawn and there is some set of mods where I maybe I could kill it but it would literally take an hour or two hours and I can't make any mistakes so I'm not sure what that exact combo is, but I suspicion that you could at least remove the need to play perfectly if you had capped Chaos Res. And then if you wanted to just bowl through it, you could probably kill it. <laughs> you know, in, in this scenario, it'd still probably take you 15, 20 minutes. But um, this isn't a Simulacrum Farmer build, but I had, I had on stream and in other venues said that the build was capable of of completing it. Now, if that mod doesn't pop up, it's fairly smooth. But with the additional chaos res, it would be even more so. So I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, generally speaking, this would be the, the best possible watcher's eye 
unless you could get one that also had energy shield on hit, maybe. But then you'd have to work in discipline. So, yeah, I think I think that's all I'm gonna say about that. Really, the the build, it just works, man. Um, oh no, there is another thing I want to talk about. So. As part of another thing that I was doing, I came into the possession of a level four Enlighten and a level three. And I found that if you stick the level four in here with your determination, malevolence, and purity of elements, you can jiggle some stuff around, take your portal out, and drop Defiance Banner. And then you can actually work in Skitter Bots. And that's kind of fun. I did that for a couple days. I picking up this watcher's eye, it felt sort of a shame to pick up a new defensive layer and then continue to drop a previous one. But as the build stood, farming the maps that I was farming, I I was not dying. And switching to skitterbots, I maybe felt a little bit squishier in the sense that Maybe I was pushing Enduring Cry more often. But other than that, it was almost negligible. And the Skitterbots are fun. It's a noticeable damage increase. And I think if you're speed farming, particularly if you're not doing any mechanics in your map that require you to stop and you just want to smash through, maybe even this, this could possibly be competitive with some other builds in terms of just straight up boss rushing. Um, and the Skitterbots are going to help you. If, if that's the type of thing that you want to do. Another option would be, depending on your gear, you can also fit in Discipline in that way instead of Skitterbots or a Herald. And so you could do some shenanigans with maybe an Azanoth's Gentle Touch and a Herald of Ash, I think, is, the, is what people do. Um, as I said, you could do Discipline. And... For me, I, I only got, with a level 21, it only gave me like three or 400 more ES and a negligible damage increase. But my gear is pretty armor heavy. If you were, for example, using an ES shield and if you had gloves that had ES and some other stuff, you might benefit more. If You, you know what I mean? If, if your gear was more set out uh, leaning towards that end. So I'm not going to use Discipline, but the Skitterbots was fun. That might be worth trying if you're playing the build. But I want to move on to the quest for Mage Blood. Let's talk about where I'm at in that. So as you can see, we don't have very many Exalties in our, uh, in our stash. And that's okay. We have lots of them still. They're just in this stash. Because we... We were farming. I had two House of Mirrors and almost enough currency to buy a third, which was just shy. I would I would estimate about 45% of the way to the Mage Blood. But I'm going to just be 100% honest. I was starting to get burned out. I was going to push through for the purpose of just like getting it done. But it was a lot of max. And so I'm not saying that you shouldn't just use the initial strategy that I was using if, if you're trying to you know, repeat what I'm doing. What I am saying is I was open to trying something different because I was a little bored and it just so happened that, you know, as I was feeling this way, my buddy Dermot offered to team up if I created an aura stacker and lend me some of his really pog gear pieces that him and his buddy had farmed up previously in the league and do some juiced up dual player content and work together and farm up a bunch of currency. And so they he had already done this type of thing. So he kind of knew what was going on, how to set it up, what what each person should be responsible for and whatever. So I'm letting him take the reins on that. He rolls up the maps. I sell all the items and manage the currency. We get together once or twice a day and blast a, a bunch of maps. It's a little bit high stress compared to what I normally do on this channel, but it's been it's been enjoyable and, and we're making a lot of currency given the amount of time that we're spending doing it. And so let me pop over here.
so this is a scion and I sold both of my house of mirrors and my mirror shard and dumped everything into this character. So the cool thing is this tech where you use a flask that reduces your mana cost so that you can use the boots here to get an aura. This is not a build guide. I barely know what I'm doing with this build. Um, but I do know that that flask is, is pretty sick, lets you get an extra aura from the boots. And then we're using this flask so that we can reserve all of our life and protect ourselves with ES. The main item that Dermot let me borrow is this elegant hubris that has one, two, three, four nodes on it that have aura effect. Extremely powerful, extremely rare. Very cool to get to play with an item like that. That's not something that uh, is within my purchase power. This is way out of my league. I could maybe get enough currency to buy something like that, but that would be my entire week. So I, I tend to not go for items like that. These boots and this shield are also pretty awesome. Got a belt as well. And these are all loaner items here. As well as that. And then I went ahead and purchased the rings, which are pretty cool. As well as the weapon and the helmet. The gloves, these are the chaos gloves I was talking about that I can use on my RF guy. Um, oh, I guess they only had 27. Uh, no, 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 no. It's because it's got the two, it's got the two mods, so it's actually quite a bit more. Uh, 42%. The chaos res on those. So anyway, the real expense on this character, though, is the gems. Every gem is anomalous this and uh, level 21 that and enlighten and empower, enhance. And it's, a, it's a nightmare. So we dumped probably 200 exalt, 150, somewhere in that range into gems, gear pieces, jewels, cluster jewels. These were really expensive for what they are. Et cetera, et cetera. But the build's really cool. It has a lot of auras. And uh, very zoomy. Jump around. Very cool. So anyway, that's, that's what we're doing. And I guess, frankly, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get the Mage Flood thing done this league. So it may be that this is more of just a learning experience where I can figure out, would it have been better to just stick by myself and just bullheadedly just, I'm going to farm cemetery for as many hours a day as it takes, even if it makes me hate the game until I get the mage blood, would that have been the play? Or should I have not done that in the first place and not started even to think about getting a mage blood until I had somebody to run duo content with? I don't know. Or maybe this was exactly what I should be doing, which is a hybrid of the two where I I do a little bit of the juice farming for the chances of the big drops and the consistent higher currency per hour. But then I supplement that with my own exploits and regular mapping and whatever else to keep the game fresh. So either way, by the end of the league, I will have a mage blood or I will have uh, a lot of information about the experience of juicing in a two person group and solo farming on an RF character and all of that that I'll try and synthesize into a final video at the end of the league that'll you know tie it together and give a perspective that might be useful even in the next league because it won't be tied to specific gear you know so having said that i would like to thank you for stopping by and listening to me ramble about my journeys in the in ray class and i will be back sooner than the break between this video and the last one with another update uh, do please hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content, if any of the stuff I'm saying is entertaining or helpful or any of that. And um, I will see you in the next video. Appreciate you.